Bonsoir tout le monde. Bonsoir tout le monde. Bonsoir. Here's what we're gonna do. You can um for um now you can mute yourselves. And during the presentations, you might have questions. Please use the chat, the chat option to to um, send your question, and then um, they will be answered in the order we're gonna receive them. Uh, and uh, uh, we have we just uh, grant um, priority to the students of the Haitian Summer Institute uh, 2020, and then. Um, Everyone else can ask any questions um, related to the presentations we're, gonna, we're going to have today. And uh, um, I'm gonna start uh, by introducing our presenters. Bonsoir tout le monde. Nous gagnons un pile plaisir pour nous présenter nos principales monde qui fait recherche pour éditer livre The Haiti Reader qui publié dans année ça même année um, 2020 publication ça c'est il fait partie en série uh, qui publié pour un pile pays qui parle sur histoire qui dit politique OK mon qui édite livre de Haiti Reader um, livre ça qui sur Haïti uh, spécialement c'est uh, professeur uh, Laurent Dubois qui uh, uh, Director a Forum for Scholars and Publics at um, not, not, not University Duke. Lee is a uh, professor so it is history and it is a woman. No gain uh, Professor uh, Kayama Glover. Lee is a uh, professor français and it is um, so Africa, Africana, and it is a director centre uh, pour l'humanité uh, digitale dans Barnard College, qui Columbia University. Nous avons un professeur Nadev Menard, qui est professeur littérature dans l'Université um, de l'État Haïti. Nous avons un um, professeur Chantal Vernat, qui um, est eh, professeur associé histoire et relations internationales na université internationale floride uh, moi même moi gagne honneur pour moi présenter nous um, quatre grands et zouzoun sa yo dans domaine recherche universitaire qui pral faire un petit causé avec nous sur livre de Haiti Reader qui un livre intéressant et me connait nous tout nous pral remer ça donc nous dit nous dit nous bienvenue et puis uh, merci pour Réponse nous by invitation ça pour um, Institut été haïtien 2020. Merci en pile. Merci Nick. Donc vous voulez que nous commencions? Oui. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And I think I, yeah, Kayama has to go, right? I think we'll be joining yeah. us back later. So thanks for coming in for a little bit. Et pour bon, nous dit tout que nous gagnons l'autre éditeur qui pas avec nous aujourd'hui, c'est Millie Pauline. Uh, we have another editor, Millie Pauline, who um, wasn't able to join us today. Um, so we also appreciate. It was really this power team that Laurent really um, curated. So. Laurent's going to start by just sharing a little bit about the background and how we all came together for this project. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ompil, and bonjour tout le monde. It's great to be part of this conversation today. Um, I think while I start, I'm going to actually just share a, a screen which has uh, images of kind of the images that are in the reader so that you have a sense of a little bit of what's going on just while I'm introducing and then we can we can come back to the gallery view if that works but that way we just thought you would have a sense of um, some of what's in it uh, gives you a sense of some of the, the, the breadth of it um, and I guess I'll just start by saying that um, Duke University Press uh, approached me about this um, 
wow, I'm trying to remember when exactly, a, a while back. <laughs> uh, they have a series, it's really one of their best-selling series at Duke Press of, of country readers. Um, actually, the Cuba Reader, I think, is maybe the best-selling book at Duke Press. Um, these are meant to be uh, collections that present work um, really f about a place, but also really very much from that place, sort of like, and, and what we, from the beginning, our agenda, I think, was very much to center uh, Haitian voices that would that may not be known that well um, to, to translate as many texts as possible that had not been translated to kind of create a kind of uh, a spectrum of voices that cover the different histories but also very much coming from literature from politics lots of different uh, a kind of multivocal text um, so as we worked um, um, we gathered this amazing team three or three or four I guess four of us will be here today um, and then Millery um, that brought, I hope, I think a really amazing set of perspectives from very different, um, different disciplines, from different, you know, periods that we study, from just different, uh, affinities and, and knowledge base. And we, um, you know, we just worked, we, we, we met together, we debated, we discussed what to include. We then, um, cr created this idea of having contributing editors, sort of really making it in into like a combit where we, reached out and talked to lots of people in Haitian studies. Um, many people included, you know, did, uh, contributed. Sometimes they just suggested things. Sometimes they actually translated. Sometimes they wrote the introductions. So there's a kind of bigger group of people really involved um, that we coordinated with to contribute. Um, and those, those are obviously indicated in the text when those have come um, from different contributing editors. So that gave us, I think, an even better breadth of expertise. Um, this was really hard. Um, it's much longer than Duke Press wanted <laughs> already, um, and it could have been substantially longer too, I think. Um, so, um, you know, obviously there are things that are missing. There are things we wish we could have put in. Sometimes we had difficulty getting rights for things, et cetera. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's in a sense a dangerous prospect to sort of say, here's, here's the Haiti reader, because of course it can only, it's, it's always gonna be only partial and it's very much our version of, of what we think is important. But I would say we, we were trying, we tried to be very um, intentional about sort of going against undermining off uh, the kind of dominant ways of seeing things, offering, you know, vo different kinds of perspectives that were, are maybe a little less common, um, you know, combining dealing with very well-known historical periods with making sure that other things that were less well-known were, were present. Um, and there's a kind of visual, so each, um, section, there's a, a, a group of color um, images in the center, but also each section has images that we present as documents. So that was an innovation we did for this reader that hadn't been the case before, but sort of we use like the visual as kind of texts. Um, we also end each section with one, usually one scholarly article, more scholarly article, whereas the rest are kind of more from the period. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess we hope that it's a kind of opening that, you know, many oh, people yeah. discover. Hell yeah. We'll discover um, uh, texts or authors that they didn't, yeah. that they weren't familiar with. Um, and uh, that this will be the beginning of, of exploration of all these different authors. So um, I guess that's all I will say. And maybe, I don't know if Chantal and Nandev want to uh, add from there, but that'd be my introduction. And thanks for, thank you all for, you know, reading and um, engaging with it. As you see images, you know, you can also put in the chat things that you're curious about with these different things, but. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I know that um Kone Kuno Supose oh um, Est-ce que peut-être uh, qu'il y a un... Okay, mettez mes noms en l'air. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to sing a carnaval song. Mettez mes noms en l'air. <laughs> so, 
pas en pile sur ces introductions. Bon, moi, je t'a dit merci en pile que Laurent invité moi pour participer à la combite. Ça, vraiment, moi, c'était un grand combite. Et une chose que j'ai vraiment apprécié, c'était que nous avons travaillé sur histoire et littérature. Um, et puis, ça, bon, c'est ça, c'est bon, c'est toute une opportunité pour apprécier l'histoire et la culture haïtienne uh, de perspectives différentes. Uh, Nadev avec Ayam a vraiment été porté en pire sous côté littérature. Et donc, avec contribution par eux, moi-même, moi, j'ai appris en pire. Hein. Et moi, peut-être que tu as dit même Bagala, Nadev, ça, ça dit. Oui. Oui, moi pense moi même bon littérature c'est domaine moi donc c'est ça moi connais mais l'homme travaille avec l'autre monde dans équipe là qui c'est historien moi c'est comme si me t'ai un cours intensif sur histoire Haïti moi apprend en pile bas que moi pas connais et Jean Laurent Abdil tout à l'heure moi pense ce livre ça t'es qu'à deux fois plus l'homme parce que plus n'a pas prendre plus n'a travaille sur le plan c'est plus n'a joindre bagaille nous t'es qu'à ajouter donc moi moi souhaite que si nous lisons les livres là, si nous commençons à feuilleter les que nous prenons plaisir et que nous poussons nous à aller plus loin pour garder qui l'autre bagaille nous capable de découvrir sur Haïti, que ce soit dans la littérature ou bien dans l'histoire ou bien dans la politique, quel que soit la sphère. Oui, yeah, so, just the mix, like Nadia was saying, the mix of, um, of texts, the different types of texts. Uh, really gave us an opportunity to have to have a full range, and I think that was really one of the neat things, as Laurent was highlighting, introducing both the art. Um, I love the music, Nadev. I think you were really great about introducing a lot of the song lyrics, mm-hmm. and Laurent, I think you shared that some of the lyrics actually were curate were were curated for this reader. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, like Chelsea, um, yeah people kind of collected uh, songs and, and so forth. So yeah, we did have that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe we can share, from, we want to start with that, maybe with one of our shares. Oh, Nick. Oh, Nick, before, go ahead, Nick. Before you share, we, we oh. think that there is um, someone, uh, Regine Michel Jean-Charles, oh. has to say something, maybe, on uh, côté Salabdi. Okay. Um, Oh, yeah. Wait. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> no, I was just saying that I have gotten a chance to see the reader because she said, Mete me en l'air. So, Mete me en l'air. Ah, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm walking and multitasking. So. <laughs> Thanks, Regine. Uh, Regine is somebody else that I always appreciate her, the way that um, what she shares, like just the scholars who really connect across the disciplines. And I think that's also something really great on Bel Bagayna program, Haitian Summer Institute. Moi, que nous vraiment gain, monde qui participe de toute branche, you know, plusieurs domaines. So, moi, qu'on est peut-être. Si nous avons dit qui est-ce qui est dans la salle, peut-être que ça a tout aidé à nous. Identifier peut-être des thèmes ou des textes que nous avons présenté, par exemple. Does anybody want to share um, your backgrounds? And so maybe that can also give us a chance to t- share a little bit about, highlight the parts of the reader that might be of particular interest to you. En créole ou anglais? Either way. So we... Ok. <laughs> um, bonsoir. 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 Moi, j'ai étudié la... le temps av... après la révolution haïtienne. Oui, c'est le temps après la Haitian révolution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so I'm really excited for the reader. I got it months ago and it came up in class today, so it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And now, what do you Which What field? Is it um, as a historian? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a PhD uh, candidate in UC Davis in history. 
South Carolina and we travail in profession medicine. Et puis moi volonté na Haiti chaque année. Moi 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 gagné une bonne expérience so far. Et puis moi moi en entré na uh, comme medicine, um, qui j'en dis, spreading uh, through uh, the uh, missionary organizations and, and the history related to that, and, and the fact that uh, uh, how a physician himself, as the dictator, how, what was going on in his mind, in my in my thoughts, how did uh, Duvayer trained as a physician, you know, I guess, did he leave the field of medicine altogether when he was, when he became, you know, president of the country? What I was curious, I, I know, so there's students, right, from the Haitian Stum Summer Institute and also teachers, or there's two, are there different groups, or how many people are students from the class? Okay. And then others who've taught, maybe taught Haitian studies, or I guess number you, okay. Um, it's just Nick and I. Okay. Nicolas and I, we are the two instructors. The two instructors. instructors, okay, got it. All right, okay. And then we have a few people from the faculty and community here. Um, I know Sharonda Leger is on our faculty of English at, um, at um, FIU, and then Javier Francisco Ortega. Uh, it's very kind to join us. Nous faisons une collaboration uh, entre, how do you say botany, Nick? Hmm? How do you say botany in Creole? I, you know, say, I don't know. It's What's the word? English. Botany, how do you say botany? Botany, 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 Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm here today in many aspects as a, I'm from Spain, not even from the Caribbean islands. I'm a botanist and I have a, an appointment between FIU and Fairchild Tropical Botanic Garden. And I've been having for a long time a big interest in the history of botany in the Caribbean islands. Then we found this uh, very famous French botanist who was also a priest who made a trip we found in Montreal his travel log of his documents. Mm -hmm. What started as a project in botany, it then developing something more interesting as a controversial. Because his travel log, it doesn't only refer to botany, it refers to some perspectives about Haiti that are really shocking. I mean, in, in, we, we're having an article coming in the coming issue of the Journal of Haitian Studies and it has been a difficult project for us to, to do, at least from my perspective as a botanist. And this priest or this um, brother of La Salle uh, is very famous in, in France, sorry, is very famous in Quebec. He's one of the fathers somehow of the uh, Quebec nationalists, um, very, in many aspects, very tolerant with, in Quebec. And then we found this travel log, had these comments, very der derogatory and really shocking to, to, to read. And gosh, it was for us very hard, really, at least for me, Chantel, very hard how to put it all together, no? Uh, we want, honestly, to avoid the word racist because um, his, his life in, somehow, in, in Quebec was totally different. Maybe the travel log was done in a way more for him personally, not to be shared. So at the end, Chantel, thank you for helping us to put this in a, in a, in a context. Something I'd like to mention now, Chantel, before I continue is, uh, last year, he also was a bit controversial also in Quebec because some of his private letters were published and it has some comments about sexuality that are so controversial. So this coming in a good time somehow for, in Quebec to sort of revive his perspective. In a way, I want to be basically offensive, but uh, Chantel is going to really to open, uh, I'm sure, a lot of discussions in Quebec 
because it's coming in the right time. Sorry, I'm into Haiti by total chance. I mean, <laughs> in botany, Haiti is an amazing country for botany. The way Haiti basically is made up, it is made of two different islands, two different floras, and it's a great country. I mean, uh, just to finish here, I have to say that uh, there's a big of um, bad press about Haiti and the botany. When you go to Haiti, really, and it's a lot left. It's more than people think about left in the countryside or the original forest. Uh, sorry, I'm not in social science and I stop here. Thank you, Michelle. thank you, Asonic, to be receptive to this collaboration between people like me who are away from the botany, from the human science, to have this great paper, which I think is going to be very controversial and in interesting, really. Chantel, mm -hmm. treat me to the album. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Merci, Ampil, Javier. I have an accent from Spain. I can't help. And I oh, think yeah, it's fine. That's my personality. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think that Javier's comments are actually really in sync with the reader because, again, it's an interdisciplinary co collection. And also, um, our intention is to really um, offer a more grounded and accurate um, representation of Haiti because as probably everybody who's here knows, um, the world doesn't, much of the world does not know Haiti. And then those of us who do, um, I think it's a, one of the things that I've appreciated about the reader is that appeal mon même si on um, yo, yo très fier de texte là, yo vraiment apprécié texte là. Mm -hmm. uh, yo exemple que moi mes bai c'est moi qui ont ma tante moi qui gagne à peu près 90 mm -hmm. ans et c'est un monde qui vraiment vive histoire hein? et puis il était remé feuilleté texte là. Mm -hmm. You know she was just looking through the text my 90 year old aunt and just getting really exciting to see the history that she's lived or that she's heard about. So um mm -hmm whether or not people are just coming to Haiti for the first time or they are very familiar with Haiti, either through lived experience or through studies. Um, you know, hopefully, it's a, we hope that the text will serve as a great resource and a starting point, right, on, on point of debat. Mm. Um, I don't know if anybody would like to speak about that. Um, Nora or Nadia. I would like to share the image back in you guys see that image? Um, I just thought I would pull this up because of the botany comments. So, so that's the painting uh, Edouard Duval Carrier, who, my painting, who, on the right, is, I would say, Cargo Man. He did painting to show all the plants that voyaged to Africa, Europe, to come to Haiti. So that's the reader. Um, Nice. I mean, maybe um, as we talk, it could help since I know only some people have read the reader, but I can show these images. And if you have questions about some of them, perhaps, um, because the pictures will kind of condense a little bit the breadth of the reader and the types of images that we had. So does that sound like a good idea, Chantal? Yeah, yeah it sounds great. Yeah. yeah. So um, if you, so that way, if you want to, you know, if anybody has questions or responses to these questions, if you just want to know what they are, or <laughs> otherwise why we included them, we, we tried to put together a group of images that kind of covers a, a lot of the range of what's in the reader. Um, and there's images uh, in a color insert, and then there's images, you know, throughout the different parts of the book. The book so. Est-ce que nous gardons chat là? Nous te dis si nous avons des questions écrit dans le chat là. Il fait quoi ça? Oui, il faut nous gardons des questions. Nick, are you going to moderate questions? Yes. Moi, je vais essayer et Lindsay is going to help me. I just wanted to add that Nadev Mena also taught um, the um, Haitian Creole in the summer, um, Haitian Summer Institute, and also she taught uh, a literature, um, Haitian Creole literature uh, at FIU for us. So uh, Nadev is not um, uh, a stranger. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> no, I have a question, Chantel. Can I ask a question? Um, sure, I think Frenan, Frenan had a question, and then after- oh, sorry, I, I lost track. So I had to raise hands, I suppose, no? I think you just put in your in the chat. Yeah, um, with, what, like the student. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very good. I I will do it. Thank you. I wasn't sure. That's okay. I write my question here, no? 
I think just that you want to ask a question. Just okay. that you want to. Okay. After Fernand. Fernand. Alors, moi-même, c'est rapidement, je voulais profiter l'occasion pour me remercier, nous, pour me dire un gros merci pour le gros travail, ça, pour le bel travail, ça, parce que c'était besoin de là, nous avons besoin de mon travail comme ça, et il est arrivé dans un bon moment. Et mm. dans, dans le cours là, que je m'avais enseigné, je suis bien content que Nick mentionne Nadev, en fait, c'est moi-même qui ai remplacé Nadev, Anessa, c'est Nadev qui a fait le travail là avant, donc. Euh, non, quoi, et je suis content, le m'a dit, moi, Nadef pas venu présenter ce livre-là, me dit, ah, c'est bel bagage. Et puis, moi, nous profiter, là, nous, comme, j'ai l'intention d'utiliser le livre dans tous les trois coups, parce que vous connaissez ces trois coups, chaque coup euh, est, est allé toutes deux semaines. Donc, nous, avec l'étudiant, nous commençons à garder déjà et, quelques textes. Et nous, ouais, là, nous ouvrons le livre-là, nous, ouais, effectivement, Jean-Laurent Dubois de Dille, son, son livre qui est riche en pile. Donc, nous gagnons euh, nos premiers textes, nous avons gardés. C'était nous chanter justement pendant que je suis tombé. Alors, et tu dis, je apprendre par Olio, nous commençons à chanter, je prends une guitare, je chante avec eux. Donc, nous, l'objectif là, c'est, vous comprenez pas seulement l'IO, mais c'est Vivio. Donc, évidemment, le Nabga de toute texte, nous, dans la classe, nous avons un fil de questions. Nous avons pas de questions sur moi après. Et sous le processus là, So, par exemple, une, question, une première question que tu avais posée, nous, on a répondu à l'autre après notre discussion, c'est qui choix, sur, sur quel critère nous sommes nous parce que son livre est tellement riche. Évidemment, Jean-Laurent Jean Dubat, dit dans la présentation, ou l'idée qui est longue. Donc, et nous, nous, nous connaissons en Haïti nous avons une richesse extraordinaire de textes. Donc, nous avons connaît sur quel critère euh, nous sommes nous pour nous sélectionner le texte. Est-ce que c'est un gros défi pour nous. Qui l'autre texte nous, nous t'a envie de mettre, que nous ne pas mettre, pour qui raison, etc. Donc, c'est le premier que ça me devait poser. Nous. Merci. Bon, moi, je suis capable d'essayer de répondre à la question. Ça, je pense que le premier bagage que nous avons fait, nous avons divisé l'histoire dans mm. différentes périodes et nous, chaque est responsable, nous avons bien deux périodes. Et pense que dans le commencement, nous faisons une liste, tout ça nous a envie de mettre dans la période par nous. Et puis, nous avons commencé à comparer les listes, et puis, nous avons des textes que nous mettons. Tout le monde dit oui, il faut que ça là quand même, nous ne pouvons pas mettre tel bagage. Nous avons des textes proposés, nous avons des gens qui disent bon, ça, bon, mais si nous avons tel bagage, peut-être nous n'avons pas besoin de ça. Et c'est pour ça que premier choix qu'on a fait. Et puis, nous pense que Laurent n'a pas parlé tout dans le commencement sur la question de droit. Il y a des textes nous t'a bien aimé il y a des textes pour nous c'était des textes nous pas nous pas de cas imaginer livre là sans texte ça mais nous pas joindre droit pour nous mettre des textes dans le livre là donc nous obligé quitter au sous côté donc moi pense ce choix c'est comme ça livre une fête mais dans le commencement c'est vrai nous t'a gain en pile en pile en pile texte parce que nous on chita nous réfléchit qui ça nous t'a mis et nous joindre en pile bagaille que nous t'a mis nous t'a obligé de faire un choix Ok, uh, uh, moi je pense que... Est-ce que je peux... Oh, sorry, je ne pas faire un petit peu suivi, suivi sous question ça, parce oh, que Evelyn Pierre, dans la salle, uh, Evelyn, c'est directrice et fondatrice de Haitian Heritage Museum dans Miami. Je vais demander Evelyn s'il t'a mis en, en lien dans le chat uh, pour le musée, tout ça que pas connu le musée. Car... Evelyn Tapmade, if it was a coffee table book, uh, not necessarily, like you could put it on your coffee table, but it's, it's just like a regular, I guess, like a textbook. It's, or, it's pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty big. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's relatively it's, light and relatively inexpensive. It so, is, it yeah. is. And, um, and it's, you know, it kind of has a coffee table quality. <laughs> this is true. Color <laughs> insert. It's not available on Amazon, sorry. It is available on Amazon. We did encourage you if you can purchasing directly from the press, right? No, Fantastic. Mean, but, yeah, um, but any major bookseller you can purchase from. And um, what I was going to say is um, oh. coffee table, something about the coffee table I was going to say. Uh, I forget. I'll come back to it, I think. But um, is there going to be a part two? <laughs> um, <laughs> Maybe somebody else. Someone yeah. else. <laughs> <laughs> 
We, well, yeah, I, I was joking. I was feeling when we were, we, our, our answer to anyone who would like to add things to the Haiti reader is that they should also make their second Haiti, another Haiti reader. You know, yeah. obviously there are many ways you could do this, you know, mm-hmm. uh, like, and I think, so I think that, that, that we, we wanted to um, include as much as we could. We wanted to put things out there that people wouldn't otherwise have. So there are probably texts that, you know, like people already can have access to that might have maybe would we could have put in there, but we wanted to do things, you know, put things in circulation that might otherwise not be. Um, even for some of the bigger authors, you know, we might have chosen texts that are a little bit less. Like I translated um, a short story by Jean, uh, by uh, Louis Joseph Janvier, um, you know, that's really interesting about the Akaou revolt. That's less, you know, Le, Le Vieux Piquet, you know, that, that Nadev, it's actually Nadev was the one who suggested that actually. <laughs> so, um, but so there are examples like that, right, where a lesser, maybe something much less known from an author you might have heard of or mm-hmm. because we wanted to multiply, get, mm-hmm. give, uh, partly what you were saying, right, which was like, we wanted for people to get a sense of just how vast and complex and, and huge this corpus is, you know. Um, that's the part of the idea, you know, is that it is to is to remind people what the, the complexity is. Gain en pile, en pile, en pile, voix, gain en pile, en pile, auteur, gain en pile, perspective, gain, bon, tout ça. Yeah. Ok, ok, na 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 uh, was uh, the same as Freeman's. I don't know if she's um, she still um, intend, intend, in, intends to ask the question. Um, it's the bon. it's the bon. but, but let, let's okay, Francis Bon. Uh, let's um, let's listen to Javier's question, and then we're gonna have. Oh, I think his question was about buying the book. No, no, it's a different one, very simple oh, question. Oh, ask. Uh, ask. One of the things for me was a really a, a surprise when I was doing the research is that the, the, in the botany part, how many been documented that when the Africans were sent as a slave from Africa to the, the Haiti, they found in their environment many plants similar as the ones found in Africa. That's how they adjust to, to the religion, to many things. Uh, does the book have any component about this, how the, the Africans, when they arrived to, to Haiti, how they adjust to the new environment in a way that they keep somehow the heritage. I don't know if my question is clear. Um, the best example is the Mapu. The Mapu is the best example. It's a tree central in Voodoo, supposed to have in, in the tree most of the deities. And the Mapu, the name is Seba Pentandra, is found both in Haiti and in, in Senegal, this area. And in Senegal, this area is already a holy tree. So when the, um, the, the slaves arrived to Haiti, they found this tree in there. A hold them to keep the identity. I don't know if your question is very vague, but I found it very fascinating how um, once they basically were obliged to uh, slaves to live in, in Haiti, they found ways and how to keep that identity through that connection with the, the countryside with the natural natural history. I don't know if the question is very vague or again, I'm not in human human sciences, you know. Is it clear? <laughs> Yeah. Um, I mean, il y a une sélection des, des géographes qui, qui relaient Georges Anglade, Georges Anglade um, qui écrit sous, sous question ça, sous question terre, géographie, botanique, qui, bon, so, so, sorry, there's a, there's, a, there's a selection by Georges Anglade, uh, who's a geographer in there, that speaks to some of this, you know, and also another one by Jean Casimir about, so we have a few pieces in that first, really the first section of the book that, that address, maybe not fully what you're what you're talking about in, in, in big detail, but the kind of broader question of how Africans kind of um, invested and transformed the landscape and became, in, and, and in particular, the ways in which this, this new form of agricultural life emerged out of the revolution. In, in Correct, that's it, that's yeah. what we're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, Thank yeah, you. there is a, a, that is a thread throughout the, the book. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Just don't so, ask me French or Creole, my apologies. That's okay, oh, oh, that's okay. Um, I can read a little part of that. I just opened yeah. up the Anglad text. It's, um, so the other, I guess one of the other things we could say is the way that the reader is organized. I can't remember if you said this already, Laura, um, is that um, a bit chron- chronologically from the pre-colonial period uh, mm-hmm. to the post-occupation, post, sorry, that's my own research identity um, hijacking the conversation, <laughs> to the post-earthquake period. 
And um, so this piece from Anglade comes up in the second part, the second generation, right? So this is a generation after the independence. Um, so I think that was Dante's period, right? You were saying. And, um, oops, I'm losing my screen here. So let's see, this is at least at last critique d'Haiti. And I can't remember if this is, I think this heading is just a heading that we, is this a heading that we offered or is that from the actual text, Laurent? Okay. Um, I think it's from the text. I'm just mentioning that, uh, no, no, actually it is. It is the title of the, uh, the text, taken from his richly illustrated at, at last critique d'Haiti. Yeah. And the reason, yeah. only reason I wanted to stop on that was because I saw a question in the chat about how did we come on the name for the book, The Haiti Reader. The mm -hmm. Haiti Reader is actually just, that's just part of the series. So it's the world, world readers. Is that right, Laurent? Yeah, yeah. So the, the, I mean, so it's they're the all reader, called like, you know, the Cuban reader, reader, the Ecuador reader. reader. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's why I, this is called, cool. yeah. But the subtitle but I went ahead and is us, did, though, right? yeah. Sorry, what? The subtitle is us, though, I think, right? The no, they all have the same subtitle as well. Oh, they do? Yeah, yeah, history, culture, <laughs> politics. <laughs> yeah, we, we were fitting into, uh, what I've done is I've put on the screen the table of contents um, mm -hmm. so that you can see it, <laughs> just to give you a sense of um, where these, how it works, right? That each, each part is chapter with a different kind of historical period. And then these are the excerpts um, each time with the author, so. But awesome. I, Chantal, I think the one you were going to read was the Georges Anglade, right? That's just yeah. from, so you uh, it's a selection from Atlas, Atlas Critique d'Haïti, mm -hmm. which I highly recommend. Um, yeah, anyway, so we wanted to put his, his voice there in the second section. So here's a little part that just talks about the gardens, I thought, because of Javier's question. It mm -hmm. says, uh, during the period of the regionalized space of the 19th century, links of consanguinity tied together generations cultivating the same land. The Laku brought together the habitat and gardens of peasants, sharing a family farm, which had been received as a concession to an ancestor who served in the armies of the War of Independence. The extended kinship, the extended kinship networks of the Laku constituted a core of resistance to plantation work and to the okay. powers of taxation to the 11 port towns. The Laku was a mode of organization born of regionalization. Um, I'll, I'll stop there. Let's keep it short for the. Yeah. So I think, um, and that theme yeah. of Laku came up a bit a lot, yeah. in, in um, the discussion. This section here, the 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 selection from Jean Casimir at the end of the first one, he's a sociologist who who developed this idea of the counter plantation system. Um, so that's another piece. I mean, I think it actually comes in a lot actually um, in different in different parts. The question of land and struggles over land, and so, yeah. Um, I can run through, I should show this, showing this to people also because if people have questions about particular excerpts that you see, mm -hmm. <laughs> please, you know, you can ask, obviously. Um, Esmani, uh, Esmani Michel, gagne une question um, et vous voulez poser. Mm -hmm. Esmani? I put it in the chat because I'm really shy, but I will read it. I, I just was wondering if there was any uh, women leaders mentioned in the Haiti Rita. I just don't know much about that history and it's something that you know, I'd be interested in finding out about. Yeah. Nadev, you translated one of the, one of the oh, we have several, but no, Nadev translated. Yeah, I was just, I paused for a minute because I was thinking about the term women leaders. Mm -hmm. Are there a lot of women in the, in the Haiti Reader? Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of uh, activists who worked with feminist organizations. There are women who worked in uh, labor organizations, writers, um, what else? Musicians. So there are a lot of women. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, here's a few. I mean, uh, if you see on the screen, this is the second independence section. Um, again, Madeleine Sylvain Boucheron, um, Cody Mall, mm -hmm. a number of feminist leaders. Um, one of my actually, I think a really incredible contribution, which again was from our, one of our contributing editors, Evelyn Alexis, uh, a letter from mm -hmm. Charlemagne Perrault's mother to Charlemagne Perrault from mm -hmm. the archives that's in there. So we, you know, the, mm -hmm. yeah, there are, I think lots of voices um, as right. well, of course, of writers like Marie Chauvet and, and yeah. other, other writers. Um, Thank you. 
So, Laurent, uh, can you just offer context for people who are not familiar with Shaman? Oh, yes, sorry. So this is a section, um, we have a, a pretty dense section on the U.S. occupation of Haiti that, you know, Chantal was <laughs> in charge of, um, that mm -hmm. has a real mix of, of uh, was that right? Did I mix that up with, with you did that right, Chantal? Uh, and I and I worked on that. Okay, something. together, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously a very important thing we wanted to include and we mix there's a, a real mix here of literature art uh archives um as you know so so both kind of the the, the nationalist movements the patriotic union and so forth you can see a selection from roger gaillard which we included because he has really like voices of people who are subjected to the corvée labor um, by the u.s marines so that's like also voices of of, of men and women from that period Again, I mentioned Charlemagne Perrault, who was um, the leader of the Kako kind of uprising against the occupation and was killed and then his body put on display by the Marines. Um, and so we, we talk about that uh, and have images of that and that discussion there, as well as then the emergence of these really important literary movements that, that Nadev is better, better positioned to, to speak about if you want, um, since obviously that's, that's the crux of your work uh, as a literary scholar, so. Yeah, no, I, I mean, do we want to read Shalmines? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Nadev. I was going to say it was, well, it was interesting. I don't know if you want to pull up the image that we have of Shalmine, the Philomé, the Philomé Aubin painting oh, yeah, that okay. we have in there. Uh-huh, yeah, but find that, yeah. Oftentimes, so Shalmine Pilat's mother is not someone who is talked a lot about as a historical figure. But the letter shows that she was very much um, involved in helping her son to resist and fight against the occupation. So I think a lot of these entries are important in terms of letting us see um, these names, these people that we're not familiar with um, traditionally and the roles that they played that were really important roles, right? Because, mm -hmm. um, and also the Gaillard entry also points to that, the number of people who are helping Shalmain Bilal across the way. So his name we all know, or people who study Haiti know, but um, there are a lot of people around him who are helping him do what he was doing, and men and women were involved in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this image, which um, I, I, I don't know if it was you, Chantal, or Nadev, who found this, this incredible image of, of you know, it says, uh, as you can see, Akako's wife, Kako herself, right? Mm -hmm. So this idea that right, women were yeah. obviously in the military, you know, that women were fighting actively, were part of the uprising as, as soldiers, too. Um, on the left, it's Philomé Aubin, who is a painter from the north of Haiti, took basically the photograph of Peralt and then made this painting based on it, but then he puts Charlemagne's mother, you know, in the, in the story again, um, in that painting. So that was also a kind of connection we drew. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to read a little bit from that. And I feel like it, it's so it's so fitting for us to actually talk about this, this selection and what Nadev said, you know, San Nadev dit qu'on s'en a pour nous songer que maman était là, right? Pour nous songer que c'était pas un seul monde, mais il y a plusieurs monde qui étaient participate in a movement, you know, in different levels. I mean, that's what we're living and that's what we're seeing in the center of the public now, right? And um, particularly um, since the whole Black Lives Matter movement has emerged, um, mothers are, you know, are at the center and they're the ones that are keeping that movement alive even when it's not at the center of the press. Um, so this is on page 200. And so this is from the widow Masséna Peralt, who is Charlemagne Peralt's and it's um, Evelyn Alexis, as um, Laura mentioned, is the is the is the contributing editor, and so she has a uh, a book coming out of, from her work. Right. Um, so we sh you can look out for that. So it says, "My dear Shelman, you who are more than I and are nearer the town, you can see how things are advancing. You have the information to know what you should do yourself well to see how the things are going advancing. I have heard that all these big men of Port-au-Prince have left." inform yourself well to see if this is true. We have no communication with the North. Everyone here has doubts. Saul and Saint-Rémy have already left. Keep yourself hidden. Do not hurry to enter into anything because we do not know the mind of the North and everyone is bursting out against the whites. No one accepts this condition. They are saying they would rather rebel than be under the whites' orders. 
you see the intentions of the people of Leogan, how it is if you cannot remain out of it yourself, because I believe that th that, that is not good for the people of Haiti. And also, do not let anyone put their hands on you. Better you are in the woods than under arrest. Make sure to see if it is true that the gentlemen have left to see how things are. You who are there can see how they go here. You will guard yourself well if you decide to remain at peace. You are intelligent, you will wait. You will be careful of yourself while waiting. People are keeping things to themselves. You will not put yourself into it too quickly. Listen well before you will do anything. You will also see the overseer of your command and the actions of the people towards you. You have more intelligence than I. I did not know about the situation of our country. Nothing more to tell you, your mother. Yeah, inter interesting. Mm -hmm. Nous gagnons trois questions. Yon se Dante qui gagne une question. Gagnons deux autres questions. Yon se Lindsay. Uh, et puis uh, avec uh, Frances et puis saint il Mais Dante gagne une question. Il n'a pas écrit, mais uh, moi, je pense que nous avons une question. Uh, Lindsay Mayer, Frances Bell, uh, à saint il Non, non. Non, non, chat là. Ok, dans tes gains, deux questions, il fait écrire là. Donc, par contre, c'est Chantal Nadev ou bien Laurent. Nous sommes capables de lire les questions dans le chat là et puis nous répondre pour nous capables de gagner le temps. Il y a une question sur la littérature, histoire. Je ne sais pas si vous voulez parler de ça. Bon, parce que nous devons vraiment dans chaque section de la littérature et histoire qui qui ensemble. Et images. Et images pour créer dialogue et pour qu'on les a, Lindsay, nous inclut section section de roman Evelyn Trouillot dans section sous histoire esclavage pour pour montrer que bon, que c'est ces littératures qui qui parlaient sous ce thème-là euh, euh, peut-être mieux que que l'histoire. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Que ouais. Et pour pour, pour surtout sur l'histoire femme non 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 esclavage qu'un archive là il y a pas parlé en pile sous femme non esclavage mais qu'un qu'un roman euh, Evelyn Trouillot qui 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 mettait euh, Bon, vie et perspective femme non, non, qui est centré ça dans, dans l'histoire. Mm -hmm. Alors, Jean Laurent dit là, dans toute section, yo, nous avons un texte historique, texte, ça veut dire, texte, moun qui t'a vivre dans l'époque là, c'est écrit, et puis nous avons un texte qui représente même l'époque ça. Yo. Uh, donc, il permet de nous varier les perspectives que nous avons montrées. Il y a des fois où nous avons des nous pas montré nos textes. Nou Mais il permet tout pour nous pou nou capables d'agir les possibilités que nous avons imaginer Haïti. Ça veut dire que tout auteur haïtien n'a pas écrit seulement sur l'esclavage, sur l'aspect politique, etc. Donc, je pense que dans chaque section, nous avons des romans, nous avons des chanter, nous avons des poésies. C'est une façon tout pour montrer que Jean imaginait haïtien en l'âge. Il y a un pile de là-dedans. Donc, ce n'est pas comme si tout texte dans une époque, chita sous événement politique qui a passé dans l'époque là non plus. Mm -hmm. Donc, nous jouons tous les deux. Nous jouons un texte qui permet d'illustrer ce qui a passé dans la vie sociale, politique, culturelle, pays. Et puis, nous jouons l'autre qui sortit dans l'imaginaire auteur. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I'll just want to follow up and I'll just do a little bit of translation because I think what you shared was so rich, Nadev, so that, that um, you know, the text really demonstrate the full breadth of the Haitian imagination, uh, you know, I would say our, our, the range of our knowledge systems, the diversity of the lived experiences. I'm elaborating a little bit here on what Nadev was saying, but um, That, that, that each of those texts, each of the text selections gives us a chance to see that um, the diversity of the Haitian experience, much richer than what um, any soundbite usually offers to us. And as we said in the, I mean, I really love, <laughs> you know, one of our, our lines in the introduction, which is to say, you know, Haiti is always in the news, at least for a cycle or two, right? Um, and, 
in our attempt is to really keep Haiti at the center and at the forefront of people's consciousness in ways that um, they may not immediately imagine. And I think language is also, there are a couple of questions specifically about language. The next question from Francis Bell um, says, Nuzi Creole, Haitian Creole, or Creole in Haiti reader. Which one do we use? Uh, we probably Haitian use Creole. Creole. Do we use Haitian think, Creole? Yes. Okay. We had use discussions Haitian. about it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I so just put up, by the way, I put up the introduction, and which is actually available online at the Duke Press site. You can download the introduction and read, you know, for free. So uh, that's, that's there. Um, sorry, just wanted to no, say. No, that. no, that's it. Um, the, there is another but, question about Creole mm -hmm. text. Yeah, and it, I mean, there are a number of texts that are translated from Creole into English. Um, songs, uh, novels, um, interview, there's a long interview that was translated, that's an interview with a survivor of the 1937 massacre um, in the Dominican Republic. That's, yeah. So there is a fair amount of, of translation from Creole into English as well. Just, I know that's just part of that question, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The next one is Nadep and others. Can I'm looking, you, sorry, I'm looking at the question. Ken says, can you speak a bit um, about the poverty does not come from the sky? Yeah, I'm not, I mean, I can speak about it. I'm not sure if the person who asked the question could elaborate maybe a little more. Mm -hmm. It's an article that Mediapar um, published, so they're a French media outlet, um, after a series of hurricanes in Haiti. And um, we thought their take on the the ways in which uh, Haiti is talked about in terms of disasters, but disasters that are natural, kind of minimizing the man-made aspects of those uh, disasters, we felt that they gave a, a nice overview of that dynamic. And so that's why we wanted to translate and include that text. Um, I'm not sure if you had a specific or if that answers what you wanted to know. I mean, I guess that last section, which Millery edited, was a lot of it was um, obviously the earthquake, you know, uh, we, we started working on this after the earthquake and the earthquake always mm -hmm. looms very large in, in many people's vision from outside of Haiti. Of course, it, I mean, it has a big effect in Haiti too. But so that last section really tries to situate that moment, but in a larger context and also mm -hmm. to just to make central, um, again, like, a really interesting article that a Haitian journalist wrote about the beginning of the cholera epidemic, you know, a, a, excerpts from a collection of Haitian thinkers after the earthquake. So again, voices that you don't often hear, at least in the United States, um, kind of putting those in the conversation, you know, making sure that those be part of the conversation and put it in a bigger context of, of Haiti's history. Mm -hmm. Dante, do you want to ask your question? I, I appreciate the written Creole. Yeah. yeah, I can. Is the Creole fine or should I ask it in English? No, no, it's fine. Just read it. Ask it. Just read okay, it. Okay, okay. Uh, combien su yo que puliva y combien yo pas yo pa utilize? Um, bon, uh, trying to think how to. Si gen, bon, gen, gen sous que, que yo te vle inclu, met, met non livre sa, mais nou, nou pa kapab jwenn droi pou, nou, nou pa gen, mou, mou pa vle kou nou publie ou, ou li, lou, li koute en pil kob <laughs> pou met non livre sa, kompren? Um, uh, mais bon, m pense ke pa gen en pil en pil sous kom sa, ke nou, nou inclu, bon, majorite ke nou vle inclu, uh, nou pa koupe beaucoup. Uh, D'accord, Chantal, Madev. It's, it's hard to remember, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, but I, know, I think like, so. Yeah, no, I, no, I was gonna say I think it's hard to, but I, I think, yeah, I'm quite que nous te tellement gain en richesse de texte ou image ou bagay que nous te bien inclus donc. Ou si nous capable, nous pas capable à inclure 
ils ont un texte, nous, nous joignent l'autre texte qui fait, qui, mm -hmm. qui parle les mêmes bagages, s'il vous plaît. Il y a des gens comme, well, I know, like, you know, like Leslie Moniga, who's like a great mm -hmm. historian of Haiti, we mm -hmm. just couldn't get the rights to publish mm -hmm. his stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so he should be in there and he's not, not because of any lack of, you know, mm -hmm. trying. <laughs> oui, et, et puis and, tout Jean-Laurent a dit avant, à certain moment, nous était um, obligé qu'il y um, You know, rendre nous compte de longueur texte là, right? que nous pas car on a fait ces élections. Et bon, dans la fin livre là, at the end of the text, there are also suggested readings, nous offrons ça. Um, et puis nous toujours dit que nous espérons que le livre ça a fait un, un point de départ, right? que les papes, um, the only, you know, c'est pas la Bible Haïti, <laughs> right? <laughs> or, or whatever, the Quran, or any other text. Uh, but, um, mais au point de départ, right? Une introduction de perspective mm -hmm. panneau. And someone else, oh, Shawanda, did I, am I jumping? I don't want to jump if somebody asked. Well, I was, yeah, go ahead. I was interested in the second part of Dante's question. Vous dites pour qui ça a plus sous pour Christophe? You mean oh. that we have more about Christophe in the book than other people? Well, then, well, um, I guess. Oh, sorry, I missed that. Mm -hmm. So I study the independence, the Republic and the Kingdom of Haiti, how they do. Mm -hmm. ah. But I saw most of the ones in this first okay. section are Christophe as opposed to the South. Yeah. That was ah, my question. Okay. I didn't know how to say all those words in Creole. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, Laurent? that's like my, they're like, Laurent, that's my fault. Um, <laughs> I mean, to some extent, I just, the Christophe story is such a fascinating one and so little known. And, you know, the Code Henri is, I mean, so partly it was like, yeah, some of it was just, these are cool documents. And mm -hmm. we could have included like Pétion's constitution or something, but it's similar to, you know, there, there was kind of questions about what, um, how much was added, you know. We do then have a significant amount on the South, like about Akaou and mm -hmm. Hawaii and uprisings and those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So there's some of it was that, like trying to pr represent different regions at different points. But yeah, it's, it's and some of it was just who, who joined, you know, who contributed, like mm -hmm. Marlena Doubt helped us with that section and is a scholar. Yeah. And stuff. So we kind of like, you know, again, there's, there's aspects of it that um, it's not necessarily all totally reasonable. You know, it was more <laughs> like what, um, I do feel like the, you know, the story of Christophe is, is under known, <laughs> you know, and, and it's, and it's an interesting, and I, we, we, fa I thought it would be pretty compelling for students to, to know about that kingdom mm -hmm. um, and the story there. So, you know, some of it was, you know, we, we were trying to think about different audiences, like who would read this book, right? And some of it's obviously teaching, you know, we, we do hope that it, this could be a useful book to teach if you were teaching a class on the history of Haiti, you might not want a textbook, but you could use this book over the semester and have people, you know, read these different voices. Um, and then also part of it was, and this, I mean, this is something that Kayama emphasized when we, when we met in, in Miami, but the, 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 the Haitian diaspora community, um, many of whom don't necessarily have read French and don't, don't necessarily therefore have access to a lot of texts by Haitians that were written in the Francophone tradition. So there's that as well, you know, so we were trying to get sort of, you know, this kind of, a kind of multiplicity of, of things that people should be aware of or have a connection to, um, but yeah. But similarly, we don't have a lot on the Haitian revolution. Mm -hmm. um, and that's partly, some of that was a little strategic because I had published a collection of primary sources about the Haitian revolution that also exists. And so we were kind of like, you know, And also, so then we were also like, well, let's just make this mostly about, you know, after 1804, basically, right? So, um, you know, but again, just mm -hmm. so that it wouldn't be 4,000 pages long. I think we're trying to keep track of the yeah, way some see. of the questions. Yeah, we had, let's see, Fanon. Um, yeah. Fanon, Shawanda, and Fekir. Did you want to say anything, Fanon, about the, the sociolinguistic? Oh, I guess, did we answer that a little bit, or do you want to bring that up? Yeah, okay. because, I mean, you, you, you started in, in talking about that. Uh, uh, yeah, you said that it's, yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm mistaken. I, I need to take, um, you know, I need to uh, take the time to go over everything, because, as you said, I, I've been looking, in, and you write, there, there's more, a text, a Creole text, 
than I thought originally. So, yeah. So Yeah, and it's true that we don't maybe identify it, but like, so most of the songs, a certain number of the poems, you know, actually, interestingly, an early text, um, like in the, in the King's Hunting Party by Just Chanlat, there are Creole sections. So anyway, we, I mean, maybe, you know, we could have done more, but we were certainly like thinking about that, you know, about, but I also think that the, yeah, so, yeah. I, I, I think an important... 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 I think an Donc, oui. automatiquement, la réalité est obligée à gagner un corpus qui est plus riche oui. du texte français. Parce que... Oui, euh, oui. Ça, ouais. mm -hmm. oui plus fort texte en français, c'est vrai. But I think also translating into English, and I think this is something we touched upon um, in the introduction, is that when we have the entire book in English, it flattens kind of the linguistic diversity. Yes that we have in the text because we don't indicate this one was translated from French, this one was in Creole, this one was in both French and English because uh, French and Creole, sorry, there are a couple of texts like that. And so it seems like all the texts are uniform in the same language when that's not at all the case. I mean, we talk about French and Creole, but then there are also different, la uh, different levels, right? So Creole from early 20th century versus contemporary Creole. So all of that diversity, unfortunately, is flattened with the English translation. Yeah. It, 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 it could be difficult to try to, you know, to portray all of that. So, of course, no. of course. <laughs> we have, you know, and so we, the, we did, I mean, there's a translation of Desafi, um, for instance, you know, for, or, mm -hmm. and from Desafi, from the Creole version rather than from the French version, because, you know, or, or from, from the Zafi. Mm -hmm. um, and that was one of our impulses too, in terms of doing music and making sure, I mean, mm -hmm. partly that obviously the, the literature or, you know, one of the, in the first section, we have a Vodou song that's translated. So we were trying to give a sense that of course, you know, the dominant language of published work in Haiti is French, but there's lots of other ways that obviously knowledge has been generated and shared, you know? Um, so that's the idea of having, you know, to some extent, the orality is represented in the, in the reader, at least we hope, you know, through ver various forms. Yeah. So. Merci, on peut. Right. Um, can we go to Shawan this question? Yeah. yeah. About instructors will use the reader differently based on their course or their interests, but as the editors, how do we see this book as a pedagogical tool, how would it be used for undergraduate students versus graduate students? I think it's wide open really for instructors in terms of how they would want to approach that. Um, and I think the nice thing about either undergrads or, gra or grads is you can select some texts or you can use uh, this actually was one of the things I wanted to say when the coffee table question came up, which is one of the great things about the reader, and I think Lisa Picard, Associate Director of LAC, mentioned this at, the, at our Miami event, is that you, know, you can really just open it up and just fall on, to, on a page and you know, mm -hmm. just dive in. Right? And um, so I, I don't know if anybody here, Fiki is also, I'm gonna just kind of combine them because they're related. Fiki is also asking if this has been used in a course yet. Uh, I don't know if anybody's, I know I've used excerpts in my, in my Haiti grad course. Well, it's um, being used at the yeah. Summer Institute. But it's using, no. right, the Summer Institute. You guys are using it. So <laughs> just come out this, this January. So that would have been before spring courses. So hopefully we'd love to hear about who is using it in their courses and how they're using it. Um, I think it could be just to the topic about how Haiti is represented, um, right? It could be used to put perspectives about two different things in conversation with one another. Um, yeah, I think it's really just any kind of, and I think that'd be a great, a great assignment, right? To have students themselves Say, how would you, you know, how do you think about Haiti? One of the things I do when I teach my classes, both undergrad and grad, is right? What do you, what comes to your mind? And then yeah. you know, we sort of have the flurry of ideas 
and then we begin to unpack why those are the things that come to people's minds and then we use the course as a way of um, either you know reinforcing expanding or challenging those ideas or again unpacking you know why those are those particular ideas that come to mind and then hopefully this text will give people again an opportunity to complicate um, how they understand about Haiti. I know for myself, I'm somebody who was um, born in the United States, born and raised and did all of my schooling in the United States and really had the privilege of growing up in a family and in a community that valued the Creole language and so was exposed to it. And so, um, you know, if I have any, you know, ability to have any kind of conversation or read, um, you know, it be, it's because of those seeds, right? It's from the mm -hmm. beginning, but it's really my time in Haiti that and the, um, conversations with people that have enriched you know my experience in that way right that's what you are for those of you who are in this immersion course um, have an opportunity to do and so for me when I was doing my dissertation research um, way back when Laurel was my dissertation advisor I had to make a plug <laughs> then I I just learned so much being there right so you immerse yourself being in the country so for for those of you who are doing work on anything on Haiti, whether academic or, or um, in the private sphere, if you want to call it that, or the public sphere, some people are doing things with politics, um, any way that you're engaging with Haiti, um, even if it's just in your own personal family experience, just I would encourage you just do like this text does, just essay, identifier, faire expérience différente que ça qu'on est déjà. You know, um, and, and, and that's what I would recommend. Maybe just add also that this reader would is a fairly handy point of departure for crafting a syllabus uh, mm -hmm. related to Haiti or the wider Caribbean, right? To just have these um, these doors open to texts that you could then explore further. We're giving you a taste, and hopefully, kind of on vous laisse sur sur votre fin in a sense, right? Like there's a a desire for more that would be stimulated by flipping through the reader and then maybe drawing from different parts to start building a syllabus outward from it. Yeah, I think that's also really that for, as, well, for both, both undergraduate and graduate students that this is like also an invitation to maybe writers that they haven't found, you know, known about before. And um, notably in like the 19th, early 20th century period, you know, where, where that literature is a little bit less known, but also in the 20th century, like a variety of so there is a way in which we hope that for graduate students, it's like a, a kind of, yeah, as you just, you just put it, like a series of doors, you know, that people could kind of go into, yeah. And if we it's were, not been, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, I was just going to say, since, since you just came back, like that we were just discussing the kind of politics of translation from Creole to, to English versus mm -hmm. French to English, and uh, the sociolinguistic question was where we were in the midst of just you know, and, and you probably have thoughts about that too, but I know um, that was where we were, we were kind of discussing as well. But what were you gonna say? Sorry, Kai, I'm, I'm I think I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Oh well. Did you want to say something about just your experience with translation, Kayama, in general, and then maybe with this volume? Um, Sure. Um, yeah, it's it's a strange thing to pop back in. I, I don't know what would, what would be. Oh, I remember what I wanted to say. <laughs> what I did want to say, if it hasn't been said already, is just to, you know, um, the imprimatur of Duke and packaging in a reader is also a gesture that is incredibly meaningful, meaning that part of the eclecticness of the texts, the texts that have been translated, is also our way of making plain what we consider worthy of, of humanistic interrogation, like what should be in the classroom and talked about and looked at from a scholarly perspective and taken seriously from a scholarly perspective. So just to say that I think there's an intervention here, which is widening our understanding of what counts as text mm -hmm. and what counts as uh, resources and materials for pedagogy. Um, and to make sure that, you know, separations between the so-called uh, intellectual and the so-called folk um, are, um, are, are obliterated or at least really challenged by this grouping of these texts together. Um, as for translation, I mean, obviously, or maybe not obviously, I'm, I translate a fair amount, <laughs> or a lot even. Um, and, you know, part of uh, participating in the project of 
of and pre presenting these texts to the Anglosphere is, to use a phrase that maybe has become a little bit cliche now, but thank you, Gina, for it, is, is providing new narratives, right? Providing, um, especially, I would say, uh, Haitian Americans, people in diaspora who don't necessarily have access to texts in their original language, um, as a reminder that this is a patrimony that's enormous, that's deep, that's rich, that's longstanding, um, that they can easily access. So to me, the work of translation um, is also something of a political and pedagogical intervention that this project participates in. It was a lot of alliteration, it was a lot of P's, but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Ayama, your question um, dovetails nicely with, I think, the next question. Am I right? Um, Nick, Ashley Lamar is the next question. Is that correct? Okay. Well, Ashley at Monday. Oh, oh I lost it. Sorry. La um, Monday, est-ce que nous avons une idée si nous avons un bénéfice pour nous faire traduction en texte en créole? So, let's see. I'm trying to collapse the question. Pour série ça en duc or en général, est-ce que ça c'est un bagage qui t'a intéressé non? I think that goes definitely under the category. I think it's a worthy, um, you know, thing to consider. Um, but I think it definitely falls under the category of <laughs> the floor is open to, to those who want to, you know, pick up the mantle of of next projects. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to say anything else on that or any of the other. It's a, it's a, a nuanced commentary and question in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, Is there, sorry. I mean, from a marketing perspective, I, I would, I don't see that a publisher would out Side of Haiti would look to publish this in Creole because if we're talking about Creole for Haitians across the diaspora, for, for example, probably they, these Haitians would read English or French or Spanish or the language of whatever country they're in. Um, and so a foreign press would not be interested in, in printing and publishing it within Haiti to have this in Creole. Um, Again, I think you would have the same marketing issues because if you could just use the um, original texts, you would have texts in both French and Creole. And right now, as the situation is in Haiti, your readers read both. Um, I think perhaps in the future, you might come to a point where you have two different reading publics. Um, but right now, you really don't. And so from a financial point of view, it doesn't really make sense for the entire Haiti reader for a press. I'm not saying it doesn't make sense from a point of view of interest, but I, it would be a hard sell, I think, for a publisher to publish the entire book in Creole. I also think, I mean, I think that what, what you could imagine is something in reverse, which is to make, make the Haiti reader into a kind of multimedia Creole thing, right? You know, to obviously like this, there are, there's a lot of stuff that's originally in Creole that's songs or those sorts of things. The, the, yeah, that would be, a way that would be of, great. Yeah, that would be the way to do it. I mm -hmm. think to turn, you know, mm -hmm. if something was in was in audio form, exactly, obviously yeah. that could reach a lot more people, right? It could be played on the radio. Mm -hmm. it, it, it wouldn't require, you know, wouldn't it would expand the audience considerably. But that's yeah. obviously a whole another dimension. But I do, I do think that's really the space if you're if you really want to take seriously the idea of reaching people a Creole language audience, that's the, that's the move. It's less about the, maybe the written text than right. moving into to sharing things in other formats, you know, and, and mm -hmm. those, cause that, and then that format could obviously function very easily in the diaspora context as well. Right. Exactly. You know, and there's an actual platform, which is the, 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 the platform of radio and television where those things could be circulated. So, um, that would be, yeah, that would be like, so if there was a, if there could be a, a sonic interpretation of the Haiti reader, um, <laughs> <laughs> in Creole, that would be, I think that would be pretty interesting. Okay, okay. Jessica gagne une question, et puis après Ashley Lamar, il mette une question sur, sur, uh, non, non, il n'y a pas Ashley, non, Jessica gagne une question, et puis après Frances Bell. 
Okay, uh, bonsoir, moi relay Jessica. Um, I am a PhD candidate in art history, and so kind of maybe tied to what you all are saying about different formats and including various different sorts of texts in this reader. Um, you know, when we started off, I was really impressed by the inclusion of, of paintings and you know works of art. Um, and I just wanted to kind of ask a question, kind of like many other people have, about the choices in what works were considered, but then also more specifically about how um, that process of finding you know what what to include how you went about that because it can be quite expensive and arduous to find you know artwork in particular mm -hmm. and then get the rights for reproduction I don't have the the hard copy yet but I was looking on JSTOR and images are in black and white but I know that they're in color in you know the the uh, hard copies or in the you know in the the tangible copy so I guess my question is just you know, what was that process like and and in finding some of these works of art to include, were they coming, you know, were the rights being given by um, artists that perhaps, you know, because Duval Carrier is, you know, it says in the book that that was courtesy of, of him. So I just was curious about what that process looked like. Not fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, was can I just tense. say- we, And that's an understatement by yeah. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we had so many ideas for images and I, I, we consulted with uh, Miguel Jewom here in Haiti and Jerry Philogen, uh, who both helped us out and gave us the names of many artists who suggested sex. They were like, oh, you can't not have this one, and this is iconic. And so we had so many options and so many ideas, but then as, as you're saying, it came down to rights. <laughs> and so what's in the book is what we were able to get the rights for. And, and afford. It, and afford and Juval Collier was you know so helpful in that yeah. sense because he was so generous yeah. with his with his work and um so yeah we, it was I think it's a sore spot for us <laughs> because there's so much that I mean you know the the tradition the artistic tradition here the visual arts here it's so rich and so we could have had a reader with only images I think um there's just so much to choose from we had to so learn not, early days not to get too attached to true. images we, we found that we wanted, to be honest. And there were, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I just add to that. I'm just going to show some of them. You know, we have this, this is a painting, a Franck Etienne painting, which we, it's true that in case, you know, there are artists, the, the ph photographers, which Millery and did, so we have photographs from Photo Combit, which is a kind of collective mm -hmm. in Haiti. Um, a number of, uh, of, of photographs from different kind of um, different Haitian photographers. So those I think came through quite well and we were lucky to kind of have um, people make, to, people sort of share those with us. Um, mm -hmm. But it really did come down to when we could find the rights to, to, mm -hmm. to the images. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to find the, uh, the some of the paintings. Um, oh, Sidika was helpful. Uh, Sidika was also, yeah. Yeah. But when it came to the artworks, that was a yeah. huge, a huge um, hurdle. Um, yes. And we really, really learned to admire you art historians. And uh, so <laughs> we also, we had the ability to include images in the, the excerpts. And so there's kind of illustrative um, images that go with materials. Then there's a, um, a density of color, like there's a color insert that really is its own object, you know, that, had, that kind of flows in its own way. And then we also um, have things that are images that we use as excerpts where we have, like, this is basically a text or if you want to think of it that way. So, so we did, we, and I think we hoped in that way, at least to give the sense of image in multi, many different ways as part of a kind of central part of, of the work of Haitian studies. Um, but it's true that, you know, there needs, obviously there, there needs to, when you deal with like, you're dealing with Haitian law and American, I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> we, well, a, a big thank you because some of those images, it's so hard to find really good quality ones, of course, for teaching or for working with. So a thank you from an art historian who struggles to find good quality images. <laughs> It, it is great to have the color insert because that does make a whole difference, that makes a big difference, you know, and that, that we do appreciate that from Duke Press to have that in there, um, even though that was, we, we ultimately, I think, so the color, like I said, the color insert we developed so that it would also have its own kind of logic, like you could sort of page through those and there's a certain motion to that story that's not tied necessarily direct with the idea that people could kind of plunge into the visual, you know, that it's not tied specifically to written texts exactly. Does that make, like, I think that's true. I think that, I don't know if my editors will agree with me, but that was sort of the decision around that, that, you know, so. 
Yeah, um, just to circle back to Evelyn, you, I don't know if you want to share a little bit about the Haitian Heritage Museum and what you do. They work also in the schools. You travail avec élèves, you travail avec publics village, and you know, you have you came from it from a perspective of, of visual arts, correct? If I'm remembering correctly, Evelyn, but then to use that as the doorway to telling the history and of Haiti and, um, and bringing in people who can speak about Haitian culture and society. I don't know if she's available to say something. Maybe later. Anyway, she put the uh, organization in the chat. So if you didn't see it, I'll, I'll pull it up and put it down again. I'll just point out, I see that Marlena Doubt, who is one of our contributing mm -hmm. editors, has joined the conversation. <laughs> yep. She wants to join in, but that just, just a, some presence for that larger collective of people who, uh, who made this happen um, there as well. So. Yeah. Um, I think there's, I, Ashley's question keeps coming up again. I don't know if, did, do you feel like we addressed your question, Ashley? Uh, we, Is it Ashley? Yeah. We, I think, I think that's an accident. <laughs> Ashley. And then Frances Hill made a comment. She says, uh, to Kayama's part, point, I was happily surprised to find song, lyrics, poems, and interviews in the reader together with more traditional texts such as literature, historical sources. It's very refreshing to put them in direct conversation with each other in a text designed to be read by students in an academic setting. And again, like even broader, right? Like Lamar said at the beginning, this is the readers are the press's biggest selling texts, right? Um, and I, when people ask me about it, I, I use a description I think you offered to me, Laurent, which is like, it's a, it's a very substantive travel guide, right? If you were pick up a travel, a travel, what are those things called? It's like a, a travel guide? A travel guide. Yeah, like a travel, <laughs> a travel guide. <laughs> and, um, Right, but with some more substance mm -hmm. in it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Duke has that, places. Yeah. They have that kind of aspiration that someone, yeah, someone who's just interested in Haiti or thinking of traveling there might pick this up and that it would be a very different experience than what they would get from a travel guide mm -hmm. because it would force them to travel in a, you know, in a different matrix, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. Nick, I got a question. Oui, uh, nous question pour que... nous pas besoin de chaque jour. Bon, <laughs> une question rapide, une question curiosité, par curiosité. Et peux-tu les dernières flés et faut que tienne que que nous gagnons une page uh, 100, uh, 210, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Et est-ce que son peinture, est-ce que au peinture original ça n'est pas exposé dans l'institut français qui était sous bicentenaire hmm. parce que parce que moi moi ouais il dit mon bagage donc nous même ça partir de de nos images nous ça partir de nos images nous nous fait photo nous nous mettez dans le livre après nous pas de accès à original là et, et peinture original Kayama. Kayama. no I I yeah, I wrote to Marie Andre. His wife gave me the okay. high resolution in, in image. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so plein de choses me rappellent. Donc, je suis curieux parce que je me suis dit que c'était qu'on allait exposer à l'Institut français, sous Bicentenaire, en Balaville. Parce que c'était trois ou quatre gros peintures français qui exposaient dans le rôle de l'Institut français. Et ça, c'est une question qui est là. Ah oui, c'est une belle peinture. Est-ce que nous avons deux petits mots sur ça pour étudier Parce que c'est une peinture extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Actually, looking for my correspondence with Marie Andre right now. Yeah, I think that was how she, again, when we, yeah, it was really what we were lucky when people, it was people who helped us get the images, you know, <laughs> like people we knew, and that was the key. Um, and it, yeah, it is really striking in the. Oh, yeah. Great painting. Yeah, I mean, I guess. It's so hard to, to understand 
for kitchen works, whether it's literature or painting, it's really hard to. <laughs> <laughs> But if you is, are in Paul Prince and you go to Frank's house, you know, he has a garage full of maybe, I, by conservative estimate, I would say three to 400 paintings um, <laughs> that he will happily show sure. you on the spot in addition to all the ones that are of his that are hanging in, in his house. <laughs> yeah. uh, none of them any simpler than the one you've just seen. Yeah. He has this unbelievable painting in his, you know, it's in his dining room, right? That's sort of his depiction of the Haitian Revolution. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, so um, that's great. I mean, yeah, so the I ideal, know, right, is, uh, sorry? No, it's good. it was embarras du choix in terms of yeah. getting an image. But that's another case where it's right, like just maybe opening the door and people's thinking, maybe people just realizing like, oh, Franck Etienne is a painter too, you know, mm -hmm. and then this whole universe of, of things that could be pursued, you know, so. Um, there's, I mean, I would just sort of say that obviously like the Centre d'Art d'Haïti in, in Haiti has a thing called the Portail de l'Art Haitien, which they're building with sort of, you know, a digital platform to share. And there's a lot of work going on too uh, with museums in Iowa. Obviously, I think the question of how we get more Haitian art available and documented is a huge one, you know. So um, I think we, we wanted to do a little work in the reader, but the, the, there's obviously much more has to be done. So. Ok, Kelly Tag en question. Kelly Tag? Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Can you speak a little louder? Yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Um... So, no, I'm going to say I'm going to say that 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 Okay, so let's say I'm going to go to Haiti. This is how it is. For me, I'm in pile. So, I have a lot of like, is there a lot of, like another book like this that's separate, that has different phases in it, or is this this book here? Um, Just this book. So, are you saying, like, if somebody wants to read, like, part one, part two, volume one, volume two, volume three? Um, no, but I think um, somebody mentioned JSTOR earlier. Uh, so I guess electronically, if people wanted to access just parts of it, they can then reference that. And so JSTOR is generally available through the universities, but my understanding is also at your public library. Um, if you're, you could speak with your research librarians at the public library um, and they could help you to get access to it whether or not your institution subscribes to it. I think at least in Miami-Dade County, there is interlibrary loan through, something called interlibrary loan through the Miami-Dade Public Library. It's interesting, growing up, I was very active going to the library, but I never knew anything about interlibrary loan until I became, uh, you know, I did start doing scholarly training and you need things for your research. And so then you start being able to access it. So you, you, you gain access, um, the library share with one another. And I imagine also at this time, um, that's practice is likely to be very heightened. So I, I would say for, if you know people who might be interested, but maybe overwhelmed by the, by the density of the text, maybe encourage them to approach it um, through those sections uh, um, through, electronic, um, through the electronic access. And I think, I think we assume and hope that people will probably use excerpts in classes. You know, they might just take one, two, three pages and use, I mean, there, you know, it can be, it definitely, like Chantal said, it doesn't have to be read, you know, all the way through. You can pull what you want from it, I guess, you know, and, and what people need from it. So. Mm -hmm. oh, no, 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 um, nous pas tant de un pile question non étudiant nous yo <laughs> 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 
même si nous pas une question peut-être si gagnant aspect de texte qui que nous t'ai apprécié qui t'ai intéressé nous ou peut-être on on que au pas de alors ça faut nous expliquer pour qui raison pas grand pile question c'est parce que comme nous te dit tout à l'heure c'est deuxième semaine courant et étudiant à pas prendre créole donc nous t'ai bien content gain gain livre là mais nous pas qu'on entrer dans livre en vrai nous pas étudier pas qu'on gain temps et parce que moi-même prévois utiliser livre pour tous les trois pour mieux donc le premier coup donc c'est seulement le texte seulement nous nous travaillons celui-ci c'est son texte folklorique et j'aime te dire pas la même tomber que tu m'as appris donc mm-hmm. alors ça c'était pour une introduction on commence comme c'est musique faire au chanter mm-hmm. mais là nous allons entrer dans le livre là en profondeur donc si présentation nous t'es faite peut-être deux semaines plus tard je pas bon pas quatre questions en pile en pile questions oh, oui ah oui ah oui <rire> Moi, moi toujours moi toujours attendre quelques questions moi pas moi pas voulu pour étudier moi yo si. poser moi poser moi question après parce que moi moi oui. pas connais rien dans le livre là <laughs> moi, moi li li moi li li tant que yo à moi te faire yo li deux sections différentes pour aujourd'hui a nous te gagne temps discuter sur quelques à moi te faire yo li à uh, musique nouvelle en cide rose Mm. et puis moi tu mm. même demandé de faire recherche mm. pour joindre et version créole là et puis nous te lit tout section qui dans page 490 à 497 qui parlait de de politique sur langue créole haïtien mm-hmm. et bien assez pour poser mm. quelques questions <laughs> Et donc, on nous dit, et si vous n'avez pas de poser des questions en créole, vous n'avez pas toujours de demander en anglais parce que tout éditeur, vous n'avez pas en anglais courant. Moi, je vais vous donner une question. Mon nom est Tanya. Et je veux juste savoir, donc je sais que les autres générations ne parlent pas, je ne sais pas, ne parlent pas en créole ou en créole. So what would you say to someone of an older generation, like your parents or grandparents, who feel like it's a waste of time to write, to learn how to write or read Creole? Can I answer that? Oh, I never, are you getting? No, I, I'm trying to, I couldn't see who was speaking. Sorry. Oh, yeah, maybe you want to answer wait. that? Go ahead. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I, I'll come in. Um, wow. Do people still say that? <laughs> yes. <I'm> just, <laughs> well, like, you know, like, oh, the older generation, the older generation hates you. So I'm thinking, talking about people like 80, 70. When you say waste of time for themselves or for you? For both. For both. Okay. Mm. Uh, well, I mean, learning a, how to read or write a language is never a waste of time, right? I mean... Um, regardless of the language of how you're going to use it, like it's, it's not a waste of time in terms of just uh, what again, it's tied to your culture. Um, I don't know. I Personally, I don't think that you would necessarily have to, as an adult, convince someone that it's a good use of your time. I think you would do it and then through practice show what you're getting out of it, if that makes sense, as opposed to having long drawn out conversations about why this is a great idea and what you're going, just go ahead and learn to read and write it. And then when they see what you are benefiting from it, they will see that it has not been a waste of time, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that approach makes sense to you. I appreciate that, Nadia, because some people you won't be able to convince. So, you know, it's, it doesn't matter it's if there's value for you you dedicate yourself um and find ways to like chime it out <laughs> right because it's not mm-hmm. constructive um for me if i had listened to some um both both um academic anyone anyone family non-family you know perspective people who had the perspective of why would you why would you go to Haiti? What, would, what are you going to go do research there for? What are you going to find? Um, and not only did I find research um, materials that were of benefit to me um, and to be able to be 
you know, collegial and support of others doing work, but um, just also learning about an abundance of, of sources that are in need of um, attention so that they can continue to be preserved. And so um, somebody who's been very um, committed to that and recently very successful in securing a grant with, um, you know, one of our other contributing editors, Julia Gaffold is, um, Gaffield is Patrick Caldier, was super helpful to several of us here in our work. And, and people are committed every day working in the archives to, do, to preserve what does exist there. Um, and then the same thing in language, just to be able to navigate. Um, to, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's the heart, I think like it's the heart of the, and the soul of the culture. That's my own experience. Um, there's something else I was going to say about that, but it escapes me now. But I think ultimately, if you see value, then I, I agree with what Madhav said. Oh, the other thing I was going to say is one of the things I also appreciate about the reader and Laura pointed to it, and just as a historian working with my colleagues who work on the earlier period, is learning about the way that Creole was present from the beginning. Exactly, <laughs> so, yeah. You know, to to know that that is part of our history um, in the text, in the right. If people are so attached to documents <laughs> as uh, legitimate text, and again, we hope that this volume will help us to see that not just written text, but um, oral or images, other forms of communication, on um, ways of communicating our knowledge as a as a as a as a people. That when we go back to the history and we begin to unearth and give attention and give value to the language that history has devalued, then we begin to have a different relationship to the language or have an opportunity yeah. to have a different relationship to the language. At the beginning of your question, Tanya, you said the older generations didn't read Creole. Question, Tanya was saying that the older generations didn't learn to read and write Creole. But the more research I do, the more I find that Creole was very much present uh, early on, not only in oral forms that everyone kind of um, knows and agrees on, but written Creole was, was present very early on as well. The orthography was not the same, but Creole has been around as a written language for a long time. And so I think a lot more people read and write Creole than we have traditionally recognized. Um, and so maybe that would be also a point of, if you did want to have that argument, is that uh, even as people keep saying that, you know, French is the written language, Creole is oral, et cetera, et cetera, history shows that a lot of people have been reading and writing Creole throughout Haitian history, even if they don't talk about it. Even if they, when they talk about reading the newspaper, reading books, they're talking about reading French, that doesn't mean that they're not reading anything in Creole. It might mean they're not speaking about Creole in the same ways or that we are not recognizing, for example, um, when certain texts are written with French orthography that the grammar is actually Creole. So there's a lot of, a lot more research and work to be done in that area, but Creole has been around for a written language, I think, longer than most people uh, realize. Mm -hmm. Tanya, maybe also just to keep in mind is the fact that for older, so-called older generations, and, and this is something we see still in the university when it comes to like black studies more broadly, that there's a stigma attached in certain ways that make, have made in the past our parents' generation or even the generation before anxious about prioritizing non-majority culture, like as if somehow it's a zero-sum game and if you are learning Creole somehow, Creole, somehow your English is going to be worse, or if you're studying your Black culture, somehow you won't be able to assimilate into majority American culture. And I think these are anxieties that even for as many of the problems that persist, um, there has been movement forward. And so people of our generations and younger feel a lot freer to recognize that to focus on one thing does not mean that you lose uh, capacity in the other. Um, and so there's just a different mindset and, and I think worry um, that we have to respect and understand um, that are coming from, from generations older. And the privilege, right, to have a program like this where there's that opportunity versus a context where if you would speak the language, you know, you would be punished, <laughs> even corporately, right? Um, so 
-hmm. That's a foreign context. I, I have a I have a question. Um, I've just been following a lot of the, you know, conversation, and it's it, this is question. This question is a little bit loaded, but then also twofold. Um, first, I would like to say from start to beginning, you know, how long did it take for you all to actually make this become a reality? That's the first question. And then the other observation that I've gotten as it relates to the second question is that there's um, a narrative or at least an interpretation of passing the torch, like there's more to be done. You know, looking at you all and having the amount of expertise and scholarship that you have, um, I would hope that this would mm -hmm. not be a one-off. So what would be next for some of the, you know, authors and editors within, you know, that contribute to this great work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, okay. So go ahead. Well, in terms of time, I think we started in 2011. Yep. So that's to answer your first question, um, in terms of how long it took. And mm -hmm. I, Michelle, yeah. well, I was just going to say, in the context is that well, a lot of different things, right? People were working on multiple things, multiple projects, <sighs> multiple points of our careers. Um, and I think the press was very patient with us. <laughs> as we... And vice versa. <laughs> right. We're, actually, they, we're patient they, with us. They told us we're actually not at all the worst of the, pe of the people. Oh, that's good. Other, other readers have taken oh, longer. So. Good. <laughs> Do you want to chime in, Kaima? Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that you know, just don't get the impression that we were a bunch of slackers. No, uh, no. <laughs> there was, it was, it, everyone was, was mul not just the editors, but also there were changes that were happening in the press in terms of editorial True, assistance yeah. and um, yeah. yes, permissions. <laughs> but also, I, I will add, importantly, our commitment to making this as collaborative as possible, of, A, among five editors, but then also this wider network of contributing mm -hmm. editors necessarily try to get a bunch of academics to do anything on time and then you know multiply that by 20 which is what we were essentially doing we were calling in favors mm -hmm. from friends and inviting people mm -hmm. into the project and everyone had their own timelines um, so among the five of us certainly mm -hmm. but then even kind of in the concentric circles outward mm -hmm. we were working with a pretty wide uh, community to corral and wrangle and if you kind of add that to the complexities around the art and the translation, et cetera, et cetera, um, it was an enterprise and there were stops and starts and lessons learned. It was an enjoyable experience, but it, yeah, it was a long, it was a long experience. Yeah. That's why, you know, that we had a great team because I mean, besides the fact that everybody obviously wanted to, to see the reader come to light of day, I think we just really loved working with each other and just always really positive energy. And I think that we hope that it's, that translates into the text that we've created. Um, I think that's why we're, you know, and now of well, course, glad to be more than 500, mm -hmm. more than 500 pages too, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not and, like, and basically no. everything, almost everything in there was, was translated. For the exactly. First time. It, it takes yeah. time to do all of that. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I would say too, that, you know, it's it's a very different book than the other readers. Actually, I've, I've gone back and looked. It's it's quite different. I, it's it's more uh, multiple in terms of the songs, the poetry, the different languages, the art. Um, we had five editors. Normally, there's like two or three. You know, which I think was better. And then this idea of having this larger kind of archipelago of contributors, really. But I would say, in terms of passing the torch, you know, collectively, if you look at the people who contributed, uh, mm -hmm. our, our five editors, but then the contributing editors. You know, every one of those people is also a, soon going to publish books or already has published books in Haitian studies. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's this really expanding, you know, it, I think it, it, it sort of is, a, it crystallizes or condenses a broader movement, you know, which is that in Haitian studies. So almost everything in that reader, there's much more to come in terms of people, um, you know, Evelyn Alexis's book coming out, you know, other people's work that is going to come out and expand on it. So in that sense, I like I think it's, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just a piece of the larger work, you know, that's going on. But it does, I think, play an important role because it's important to have these kinds of texts to use in classrooms. And I would say um, a text like this, as opposed to a textbook style text, 
really opens up the space for, for different kinds of pedagogy and teaching, you know, so you can use it to do that kind of work. It does go through Asian history, but I think in terms of students, maybe it's a little bit more inviting. Um, and, and, you know, there's, there's more uh, kind of engaging that the students can do and they can pick a certain text and they can emphasize others and then they can dive in after having seen something they really like and go further. So that, I think, I feel like pedagogically there's some, the, the, it, it does something important and hopefully, well, hopefully we'll do something important. I mean, we have to see, but that was, I, I, I do think it's, you know, the, the form itself, which, which did take a long time to realize, um, I think is important. So. Mm -hmm. We have yeah, to no, captain to pending questions. I just send them to to Chantal, and um, those. Uh, this is gonna be the last questions for today. Okay. Um, so uh, Lindsay is gonna um, take over. Okay. So Dante has another question. Do you wanna tell, share your question, Gaston? Yeah. Sorry. All my questions are about sources and everything. Um, does that Creole make sense, <laughs> or is it English? Mais c'est qui ça qui plus important sur yo sociaux les mettez les mais yo pas utiliser so meaning which ones do we not we think are very important but that we didn't use in the text yeah so that's like what I was trying to convey yeah like what were the ones like for each of you that like I wish this could have been but you know rights or translation or time whatever you couldn't include which I think pairs mm -hmm. well with the next one too Right. The next question is about what are some of our favorite pieces in the text mm -hmm. and why. Um, I mean, uh, Laurent mentioned earlier before. You know, it's funny because I don't have like I don't feel like that like particular strong regret about anything that's not in it. You know, I, I think maybe the visual could have been some more paint. Like we could have maybe had more art if there was. I would I would have maybe liked that, you know, if there was, but I don't feel like there's sort of a text that, you know, it like somehow the Haiti reader is like fundamentally lacking because it's mm -hmm. not in there, you know, <laughs> personally. I mean, but maybe others. <laughs> well, know. I guess maybe what one that you would have liked to see that you couldn't, I mean, not necessarily like the, the best one that would make the reader better, yeah. but like your personal favorite that you couldn't, if that's better or worse of a question. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Well, Laura mentioned, I think, again, because of the richness of what the collection is, and the sub suggested readings. I think we also may have done that where there were items where we couldn't have included them. I think we were certain to include it in the suggested readings list. Um, we may have also repressed traumatic memories and just kept them moving. <laughs> no, it just makes sense, you know, like we've been doing this for a while now and if we held on to every, yeah. you know, little thing or disappointment, you know, it, we would have been very sad at the end of this journey, whereas, <laughs> I think we've just gotten to a point of deep celebration and the easier question to ask or like, what are the pieces we love, or to answer, but what are the parts that we love? Yeah. Um, because it, it, it is such a, an expression of, of what we were able to, uh, you know, to the, at the risk of sounding cheesy, but what we were able to accomplish, not like what we were able to accomplish, but like what we were able to offer, you know, that, that we're happy about, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we've spent a lot of time, ever spent a lot of time like in deep lamentation about a missed opportunity, really. Really not. Mm -hmm. I, think I did have lamentations, Kaima. But, but I think like you said, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. But I think I, I repressed them like you said, because I mean, what, what can you do about it? So you're not gonna dwell on it. But um, one thing I can say as a music lover is there's not a lot of compa in this. And that's something I'm sad about. But again, it's because first of all, it's music and it would be hard, I think even harder to render than some of the folk songs, for example. And then you would have rights and all of that. So, but that's something I feel like should have been there because it's such a big part of Haitian culture and it's not really present in the reader. Um, in terms of favorite pieces, it's funny because thinking about it, I think my, the two pieces that um, I would, I guess, identify as favorites are not literary texts and I worked a lot more with the literature but I um the interview um with the survivor of the 1937 massacre on the you know patriotic and fighting against the U.S. occupation for me are the the pieces that I guess moved me the most um mm -hmm. as I was working with them and translating um mm -hmm. and kind of stay with me the more the most mm -hmm. Um, I was just going to just quickly add that um, 
on the Creole question earlier, which just is I just to put that like we do have we have Creole language texts from the 1750s, like you know in Saint Domingue mm -hmm. there was always already Creole language theater. Mm -hmm. In the Haitian Revolution, many proclamations were published in Haitian Creole. So there's, I mean, just to kind of, I think, and there are some of that, you know, that, um, I mean, again, I think all of that linguistic complexity, it's interesting talking about it today, because I realize, like, I think it's embedded in the reader, maybe we could have foregrounded it in different ways, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's very important. But I think it's, and it's part of the project is to kind of, you know, again, I mean, all of the other issues are really vital too, but it's just to change people's understanding of the language. You know, there, there's people have, unfortunately, there's been so much racism and denigration directed at, at the culture that, you know, that, that we need to kind of resist, right? And some, and, and this is one way of doing it just to kind of provide, so. I mean, I could add that, um, you know, I'm, I'm, one of the pieces Laura mentioned that we didn't, were not able to include was the Maniga essay. We could have equally used um, um, a piece by um, by uh, Enoch Tuyo about the uh, transition from Francophone to Anglophone or American dominance in um, in Haiti. But we do have. Susie Castor, an excerpt uh, on the veneer of modernization, which comes from her text about the occupation. And hopefully, you know, I think Hans Schmidt, which is a, is a great resource, is a go-to text for a lot of people in English on the occupation, um, but it would be great for people to read um, Castor and also to just challenge the, the, the persistent idea about what development looks like and how it, you know, mm -hmm. what it, supposedly contributes and we could have a similar conversation about urban politics um, across you know really globally uh, urbanization and for me actually that's part of why really that my approach to studying Haiti is to always put it into conversation with these themes and um, process these experiences in history right so that it's a, again it's a human experience it's a social political challenges that are not necessarily specific to, there are obviously things that can be specific to a location but that there can be um you know part of larger global inequities and of course if we think about the history of haiti and the caribbean um, which i think each of us here do that in our work showing how it's central to really our modern experience our present experience present day experience um we had again there's just so much of so much of that um, we had, I think, one piece which was nice, and I think it's just something that fell through the cracks, was that we had these images of the railroads, um, the trains that had been, oh, yeah. had been in in, um, in Haiti. And again, that's part of, again, part of the industrializing in, imperial in de development on the island. Um, but I think it, can, it comes through, I think it's made reference to in another way in one of the entry text. So I think in multiple ways we try to touch on the things that we felt were important. I mean, it's really dense and rich collection that hopefully is, again, as been said multiple times here, very useful, right? Um, and I think I would just add no. So no, on, nothing, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of the Kimberly Green Latin American and Caribbean Studies um, Center and also the Haitian Summer Institute, I just want to give a very strong um, and heartfelt thank you to all of the presenters today. It was a, such I'll give an applause. <laughs> it was such a treat to hear from the editors about the Haiti Reader, and I think even more so for the students who are using it as one of their textbooks this summer. So um, I want to thank all of the editors. I also want to thank our instructors, Nick and Fernan, um, the students who were in attendance, and also attendees from the general public. So this is the first of our six um, guest lecture series as part of the Haitian Summer Institute. So please keep a lookout on our website for the additional lectures, which will be occurring between now and July 30th. So thank you so much to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank Take you care, all. everyone. Thank you. Good luck. Bye. Bye. Bye.